All right, so I'm back with something a little bit out of the ordinary this time. As you might have seen in my previous post, I just acquired this mysterious camera bag, which is actually a little bit closer to being a box than a bag. But this is kind of a vintage camera holder, we'll just call it for now. And I got it at a pretty reasonable price off eBay, mainly for the camera that's inside, but we'll get to that later. In fact, it'll get its entirely own video all unto itself. But uh, I was going to do a little bit of autopsy on this camera bag. I always find it kind of interesting to go through these old camera bags and see what weird accessories were with them and maybe get an idea of how they were used or who used them or something of that nature. I've already looked through this and there's, there's nothing too crazy or too personal, but there are some interesting little artifacts. Um, I think I'm probably going to throw a lot of them away because they're not really things I have a use for and some of them are clearly broken. But they are interesting little things I thought I might just share with you and give you an idea of what a camera bag was like uh, circa late 1950s, maybe early 1960s. Uh, so like I said, I got this off uh, eBay. I can't recall where it came from off the top of my head, somewhere in the East Coast. I believe uh, whenever it was found, apparently it was found in the estate of someone who passed away, which is always charming to know. But uh, I'm guessing the camera bag was actually locked down here and they couldn't find the keys, so they cut this uh, bag or box open. And uh, that's kind of how I got it. So you have the camera itself which is the main thing I was interested in. It's got a, a really nice case and strap. They're in great case, really, really great shape, well taken care of. Um, the leather was getting a little dry, so I'm gonna add some luster to it. And uh, the camera, if you're interested to know, since everybody's been asking, it is technically branded as a Brumberger, but this is actually a uh, Neoka S2, and some of them were rebranded. These were rebranded as Brumbergers, and some of the later models were rebranded as Robins and things of that nature. But this is a camera I'd kind of been interested in for a while, and I found a really good price on it, so I, I went ahead and jumped on it and bought it. So that's the actual camera itself, kind of a mid-range to maybe even kind of more lower-end consumer-grade camera for the time. They would have been relatively affordable. Uh, not wildly different from something like a, an Argus... Um, an Argus C3, a little bit better I would say, but kind of in the same neighborhood, just Japanese made. So you have that. Uh, interestingly, it came with another strap extender. I don't really know why that was in there or what this would have come with, but uh, it's there. It's in pretty good shape, so I, I might use it. Uh, keeping in the uh, strap theme, there was the shoulder strap for this bag that would have kind of clipped onto these little the belt over here. It was completely unused for some reason, and it's in great shape. Uh, way better shape than the rest of the bag. I would, I'd like to use it, but I have nothing to use it on. Uh, so it might get thrown away with the bag. If you need one of these um, extended straps for an old camera bag, let me know and I'll send that to you. So nothing too exciting too far, but it gets a little better. A cleaning cloth, pretty much unused. Uh, we get this interesting accessory right here. So it's some sort of a pistol grip. It doesn't have a trigger or any sort of controls on it, but it does have a little screw mount and a little rubber gasket where you can screw it on the bottom of a camera. And perhaps more interestingly, it has a screw mount on the bottom and it had this little wrist lanyard you can screw into a camera. It's sort of a simple, easy way to carry it around. I've never had one of these, but I've always wanted one. So I got one now. As for this, I, I don't really know what you'd use it on. I think this is something you'd use on more of like a, a Super 8 movie camera, like a Bolex or something. So I'll hold on to that for a bit, but I imagine I'm going to part with it at some time in the future because I don't have much need for it. Uh, we have this right here, something you're probably kind of familiar with if you know old cameras. It is an old flash. And um, this is actually the first one I've seen quite like this. It kind of uh, has a, I don't know what you want to call it, a transformation mode where it pops out like that and you get a little simple flash. It's kind of cheap and lightweight. You need flash bulbs for it though, and I believe they're one-time use flash bulbs that probably haven't been made in 30 or 40 years, so not much luck there. Like I said though, I've never had one of these before, so I was kind of interested to see that it apparently requires batteries. And it looks like it needs three, um, I guess that would be AA batteries. And I was surprised by that. I kind of thought flash bulbs were self-contained and didn't need batteries. I thought that was kind of an advantage they had, but Apparently not, so we've got another kind of useless item. Not looking great so far, but I did find something kind of interesting here. So this is a, um, a Cornette, I think it's a, a Cornette B light meter, an old selenium light meter, and the case is in great shape. It's got this interesting little uh, kind of chain with a clip. I don't know what you'd really clip it onto, but it's there. And uh, surprisingly, when you pop it, it actually seems to respond and it kind of seems to work. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, I haven't really compared it yet, but it seems like it's reasonably accurate, and in a pinch you could probably use that and it would be better than nothing. 
But um, that's kind of an interesting little thing because, again, these old selenium meters, not very rare, not very valuable, but to see one that works is um, not all that common anymore. So that's kind of a nice little find. Uh, we got a piece of uh, boot leather, boot lace, I guess. Don't know why that would be in there. Uh, then we got some stuff here. Here's something kind of interesting. So this is a Series 6 filter. And um, I have, this is the actual outer rim that would hold the filter. And there's a filter inside. So you have this sort of rim adapter piece right here that comes open eventually. And inside, you have just a very simple glass filter, kind of orange in color, and it just has a metal rim around it. There's no threading or anything. You have to actually put the filter in an adapter, or in some cases, specially designed lens hoods. A lot of lens hoods were designed to hold these. Um, a lot of the early Nikon ones and probably a ton of other ones I'm not familiar with. But you got an interesting little uh, kind of adapter slash filter thing there that does actually fit on the Brumberger, but uh, you have to take off the, the, um, the little lens hood that's on there. So that's something I might potentially use. This will fit my some of my Nikon lenses, uh, but interestingly, it has a very nice case that it's got a, a lower part for the actual filter and an upper part for the adapter. It's got that neat little sliding door thing. I've never seen one quite like that, and it's pretty interesting. Kind of like that. Very durable, and it looks like you can uh, kind of stack them up so you could have more colored filters in that one particular adapter unit. Um, don't know how easy those will be to find because I've never seen these, but it is kind of interesting. Getting towards the end. So there's an interesting type of, uh, I guess what you'd refer to as a tripod, but as you can probably tell, it's, uh, it's broken, so that's going to go in the garbage. But it has sort of a, a universal socket head here, and you can attach a couple of things. You can, well, really just one thing. You can attach this little uh, whoop, sort of swiveling adapter right there, and it'll go on there, and it it's kind of broken, but it will uh, hold a camera theoretically. Uh, this one, something happened and it's very, very loose. I think it lost threading, so it doesn't really hold. But that would have been a neat little thing if it worked. And uh, it's got sort of a trick up its sleeve. You have this little clamp and it has the same sort of universal socket. So you could clamp this onto something like maybe some sort of angle iron somewhere if you're on a construction site or a ship. And then you can pop that on and you can kind of hang your camera or flash somewhere, which don't know how necessary that would be, but it's kind of a clever little device for the time. Uh, again, I don't think this is something I'm going to be keeping. It's, uh, it's kind of finicky, as you can see. If you unscrew it, it just kind of falls apart. And it seems like a lot of the threads have worn out. And with a broken leg on the tripod, it's pretty useless. Uh, and that's pretty... Oh, wait. We got something else. It's an old silica bag. You don't, you don't see those too much. It's kind of something. And up here, we have a bunch of uh, files and little bits of paper. Uh, nothing too amazing, but you do get uh, the warranty card for the flash. It's actually a money order thing. I don't think I should show that. Uh, there's some interesting uh, inserts from old Kodak film. I haven't seen too many of these, but there's a few of them for different film types. Uh, even one for Kodachrome right there, which hasn't been made in a while, but it's kind of an interesting little piece of history. Uh, Kodak Plus X. Um, there's another, I guess it's the manual for the little filter. I mean, not the filter, the uh, light meter. And you have this right here. This is actually a little exposure calculator for uh, Kodak Films. I've never seen one of these before, but it's in very good shape. Uh, most of the films it calculates for are no longer in existence, but another interesting little piece of history. And uh, finally, we get down to, the, we got the manual for the Brumberger, which is kind of falling apart. It's interesting to see that they actually kept pictures of uh, Japanese people in it. You'd kind of think they would have gone with generic cartoons or something like a lot of the Japanese camera companies, but I found that kind of interesting. And you've got the old uh, guarantee card, which I believe actually has the uh, address for the Brumberger warehouse in New York, which I believe closed down quite some time ago. But it is kind of kind of an interesting little thing that goes along with this camera that technically is a pretty common camera design. It's nothing that rare, unique, but the, uh, the Brumberger branding on this camera is not very common and you don't really hear much about them. So I find it interesting that this company did have a couple of cameras rebranded with their name on it, and uh, they, they're still floating around, even though that company went out of business long, long ago. So uh, don't know if that's going to really excite anybody too much, but I thought that was kind of interesting to take a peek at an old camera bag and get an idea of what's in there and uh, what photographers might have been using 50 or more years ago. So uh, if you like that, leave a like. If not, uh, you know, I guess don't do anything. 
So uh, that's it. I'll be back later with an actual review of this camera. I've got some film I'm going to put in there, and uh, I've already got some opinions that are forming on it, but stay tuned for that. And until then, have a great weekend.